hello everyone welcome back in this video let's see on how to consume the weather web services rest and soap in this video we will learn on how to consume and produce the weather web services okay so all you have to do is you should have downloaded the apache access jar files uh, download and set up in the eclipse and if it is a access to or cxf both are fine we can uh, work with any of the ja any of the framework so i'll quickly show you on how to browse and download the apache access 2 or apache cxf so if you go to the google and just type in download apache access 2 the very first link that is verified by apache and when you open that it will guide you to the page where you can download the zip file and i'll show you on how to search for the cxf it's it's also really really simple it's it's the same apache so when you open the first link it will guide you to download on how to uh, download the jar file zip file i have already downloaded it in my machine so this uh, i'm using the spotlight to browse to all the folders in my macbook so it's showing that i have already downloaded and let me show you access to this is how the file will be when you download when i get into the folder jar file when i extract it and extract the zip file this is how the folder structure and in the zip file i'll find all the all those jars so let me roll back to the clips and uh, i'll get started by creating a new dynamic web project because we are dealing with the restful web services we do have to uh, make it a dynamic it's fine even if you create a java project but make sure you will be able to set up the uh, facets with the apache cxf or apache access 2 better go with the version of uh, 3.0 and make sure you will check in the apache access 2 web server and run in the run times you have to so configure that and you will uh, you will you don't see anymore this kind of error like apache access 2 web services so um, it, it takes a little bit of time and do a little bit of research on how to uh, set up the runtime. I have already did for the CXF and in the runtimes and in the um, details you can see on how I did. It, it should be pretty easy. And this is how you do even do with the access to also. So check make sure you'll check those uh, any one of that and uh, click on OK. So that will be uh, that will be that will load all the jar files needed for the uh, project so I'm quickly naming that project as CFX CXF uh, web app and uh, it would just asking ask for a Java perspective and uh, because this is a J2W project and in the source folder um, I will create the main class so this is a for source folder here in the resources java resources uh, you can even try by um, going with the web services client restful client um, so how to find the right service so when you get into this open weather app so you can google that also just like open weather app api and uh, let me close all the tabs so that you will be clear so in the first link you will find the current weather data uh, click on the api doc you will find various service by name by id and by geographical coordinations in the coordinations you are giving an input uh, latitude longitude and also app id so these are the three fields and so i just copied the url and pasted it in the place and uh, right uh, go enter the right package name and uh, it doesn't work for me but give it a try so what the other way is that create a java class uh, and uh, uh, we'll write the java program on how to implement or consume this web service weather web service okay this, this web services are predefined and they are hosted publicly so everyone can use that and access and consume them so for practice that should be really helpful yeah I'm, here i'm making a console application that means we'll give the latitude and longitude as an inputs in the console so i'm i'm writing a sysout 
for latitude longitudes and i'll use a scanner uh, to scan them uh, through console and uh, and you know like we'll see uh, here i'm writing the scanner class just to grab the input from the console don't worry about the word lines um, you can just import them after you completely write the statement yeah you can import in java.utils package and i'll uh, grab that into an integer data type in the same way i'll do it for the longitudes to latitudes and longitudes are the two input fields we are providing dynamically so we have got the two fields in lat and long now i will provide this two uh, as an param to add two uh, integers as an parameters to a another method so I'm I'm returning the uh, writing the method as a string data return type. So because uh, the object which we return from by inputting the latitude and longitude is a bunch of JSON statement. So that statement contains a lot of words and uh, a long long sentence. So I'm taking it as a string method type, which should return a string, right? So here I'm uh, just calling the same function which is non-static so i have to create a class object and uh, call that and i'm passing the two parameters and uh, oh i think it's a uh, integer so i should pass a integer in the parameters okay so here, here i will use the client uh, this client is a uh, predefined method in uh, we can import from the web services jar files I am using a string buffer because we are sending the latitude and longitude as a dynamic values right from the input console so this is how we um, send the parameters dynamically in the predefined uh, in, in a url we can use the escape characters if there are any spaces but we don't need for this kind of simple url So I'm gonna um, grab this latitude and longitude, but the app ID it remains the same because don't don't edit the app ID. It's a different thing uh, to gain the access to the service. We are not changing the app ID. We are just um, um, giving a different values for the latitude and longitude. So what I'm going to do is as i take the input from the latitude and longitude that i'm going to provide as a dynamic values into the uri just like this just appending appending to the string so here if i give a latitude value as one it will come as one and also append it to the uri this is what i'm trying to do and the longitude value equal to long lon so that it will dynamically gets into that url and process so after i'm sorry uh, it should be web target so web target from the web services we are trying to use and web, I'm, i'll just uh, write a value as target and client dot Um, here I guess um, I'm doing something wrong um, no we don't cast the client but uh, there's something else I just missed mm. oh wait 
so I guess um, here we are using the wrong client from a different class so um, I'll sh show you on which client to grab we have to use this one web services dot restful okay so let me just uh, delete that previous import and yeah, yeah I will delete this and we are ready to import the right one so import that client client equal to client um, client builder I guess here we are building a new client right client builder dot a new client right yeah this should work see and after that uh, I'll just uh, so to run the service um, I, I will refer the target dot uh, register sorry request sorry request uh, target dot request dot get of um, class dot objects just to print the what is getting from in the object string dot class I will just uh, output the following statement and let's try for the first time so I'm providing the latitude value of 34 longitude as 21 and give it few minutes here we go boom we got the result cloudy or whatever it is like see clear sky you can see over there so this is how we um, consume the weather web services in Java just a few minutes of work and I'm just writing a success statement at the end just to be clear let me just give a quick try again there you go we established the connection and we are able to get the output in the console hope you enjoyed and like this video thank you guys bye